I'm a visual person. I think we all are to some extent. And when I draw things out, I seem to understand them all. So if you're trying to understand the scratch trigonometry functions, then check out this tutorial that graphs sine, cos, and tan. Working along with me will go a long way to building your understanding of maths. So join me in just a sec. Hey what's up crew, it's the Surfing Scratcher here, teacher surfer programmer and I help curious people just like you along on their learning journeys through video tutorials. This tutorial builds on an existing one that showed you the input values that you put into the trigonometry functions and the inverse trig functions. There's a card in the top right hand corner for you right now to go check that out and if you've already done it then probably skip ahead about a minute and a half. Otherwise let's get scratching. What I'd like you to do is open up Scratch, open a new project and head over to the backdrops. And I'd like you to add in here the background, the XY grid. We're going to create a new variable. Actually, we'll just rename this one and we're going to call it angle. We're going to, when the green flag is clicked, going to set angle to zero degrees. Then we're going to repeat for a full revolution of our circle. So a full revolution is 360. And then we want to change our angle by one. So you can see here as I click the green flag, our angle is incrementing. Now we're going to make three lists. We're going to create sine values, cos values, and tan values. So you can see here we've got those three lists. And the thing I like to do before we start mutating those lists is just to delete all of those values. We're going to delete all the values of cos, all the values of sine, and all the values of tan. Recall that the sine, cos, and tan functions, they all take an angle. So what we'll do, is we're going to add to sine values the sine of the current angle. We'll grab our angle variable. So remember the angle is incrementing from zero to 360. We're gonna have 360 values in here, which means we'll record all the values of the sine of this angle. We'll do the same thing for cos and tan. I just duplicated, but remember to change the list that you were inserting those values into. Lastly, we just need to click the green flag and get all of our values here. Now the list item number could refer to the angle, but you can see here it's slightly off. Because remember, for a zero degree angle, the Y value should be zero and the color should be one. To get around that, you can just set the starting angle to one. You can see at the beginning, when the angle is one, this is the value of sine, cos, and tan. I strongly encourage you to look through these lists now and check out the range of their values. So when I scroll down here and I know when I get to 90 degrees, sine's gonna be one and then it reverses. The opposite happens for cos. Sort of starts at one and then it decreases all the way down when the angle's 90 to a value of zero. And tan does something even more funky that we'll see with the graph when it gets to 90. It ends up at this infinity value. See if you can figure out what the maximum value of sine is and the minimum value of sine is, and do the same for cos and tan. So remember the sine, cos and tan functions take an angle and the sine and cos functions return values between negative one and one, and tan returns values between negative infinity and infinity. But they pass through negative one, zero, and one. Before we start drawing, I just want to quickly talk about the inverse functions. For the sake of being pedantic, the A here stands for arc, it's arc sine, arc cos, and arc tan. But I'm just going to call them A sine, A cos, and A tan. So if the sine, cos, and tan functions take an angle and return a value between negative one and one for the large part, for sine and cos at least, then these inverse functions, they just do the opposite. So we click on this function here, we get 0.5, which is the return value of sine of 30. So if we input 0.5 into the a sine function, we should get an angle of 30, and we do. Try the same thing for cos and tan in the inverse functions, so a cos and a tan. The inverse functions, just take that value between negative one and one for a sine and a cos, and negative infinity to infinity for a tan. But you can't actually type infinity into the a tan block. These inverse trig functions, they're super useful to calculate the direction of any sprite. And you'll see that if you work through the game of this trig series. That's probably a nice place to park this tutorial. In part two, we're gonna go ahead and graph these trig functions on the stage right here using some sprites. I was gonna combine it with this one, but it got a little long, so we're gonna chop it up. But now you know which values to put into the trig functions and the inverse trig functions. I strongly encourage you to revisit the unit circle, link below in the description. And also go check out the Khan Academy videos if you're a bit fuzzy on trigonometry. Remember, it's a journey, but you've got this. Okay, we're gonna get drawing, and to do that, we're gonna create a new event. We're going to call that event render. Then we're going to create a new sprite. Actually, we're going to paint it. I'm going to get the text tool and I'm actually going to insert an emoji here because I'm a surfer. We're going to get some surface here and we're going to be surfing these waves. Okay, so I'm just going to get this little character and I'm going to zoom right in. I'm going to reflect it and then I'm going to put the surfer right there in the center. I'm going to call this sprite sign 
and jump back over to the code tab. So when the green flag is clicked, I'm just gonna set our sign server here to zero, zero and drag out when you receive render. I'm gonna set the Y to, to the item of sign values because this is our sign surfer and the value we wanna set it to is the current angle. Just before we move on, it's Surfing Scratcher from the future here. And I just want to show you that you could use the sign function directly in here instead of the sign values. So here I am, I'm just going to put the sign function there. I'm going to duplicate this angle. And if I click it, I get 0 0.438. negative 0.438. And if I drag out this block and click it, I get the same value there. So these two blocks, they do the exact same thing. And the reason I'm using this version is because we've already got all these values already here in this list. They do the exact same thing. And this is how you would usually work. Recall in the code of the stage that we're adding all those values to the list and changing their angle. We just need to slightly modify this because we want to broadcast render after we've added the items to the lists. We also just want to add a very slight delay just so our sprites have a chance to catch up and read this angle before we change it. I'm gonna click back on the sign surfer and if I click the green flag, nothing actually happens right now. And the reason for that is that these values are absolutely tiny. To get around that, we need to multiply using a constant. What on earth does that mean? Well, the constant that I'm gonna to choose to use is 100 because 100 is nice and easy. What's gonna happen is we're gonna get the values, the sign values here, I'm going to multiply that value by 100 and the result will be a percentage value of 100. So the value of 0.017, which is the first value in our sign values here, that's gonna return around one. So our value is gonna be 1.7. Conversely, when we're halfway up, we're going to be around halfway to 100. And when we're all the way to the top, of course, it'll be 100. So we're gonna slot that value from our list into this little multiplication block here, multiplying by 100. Click the green flag and you'll see our surfer is rising up and it's gonna rise all the way up to 100 and then it's gonna drop back down after we pass 90 degrees. A fun thing we can do is say, set the X value to negative 180 when we click the green flag. And as we receive render, we can change the X value by one. Watch what happens to our surfer now. And would you look at that, when we click the green flag, our surfer is actually surfing, but it kind of looks like it's levitating in the air. We're gonna get the pen tool and trace the path that the surfer is surfing. That's to make it a little bit more visible. To do that, go into the extensions and go grab the pen extension. We want to erase all when the green flag is clicked. And I like setting the pen size to around about three. If you want to change the color, go ahead and do that too. I can see our surfer is kind of blue. So why not have a bit of a blue line happening there? Then you want to put the pen down just before you move it. And after the surfer is moved, we're going to raise the pen. Click the green flag. And now let's check out the path that our surfer is surfing. Okay, so that's pretty cool. You can see our surfer has just topped out at 100 there. It sliced through the zero. I've just got rid of our tan values there. You can see it bottoms out at negative 100 and it lands back here at positive 180x, and y is back at zero. Now, I want you to do the same thing for the cos values. What? The cos values? Yeah, it's gonna be super simple. All you need to do is duplicate that sprite. Let's just rename it, and go back into the costumes. Going to change the surfing emoji to our female surfer here. Cool, that's gnarly. Head back over to the code. Gonna change the color to represent that sort of pinky color there. The next thing we need to do is change the list that we're referring to. We're referring to the cos values now. Now cos kind of starts out at one, so initially it's going to set y is one times 100. So we need to change the starting position of our y value here, and we'll change the x by one. Then click the green flag, and watch our female surfer surf down the wave, and our male surfer surf up the wave. And you can see here that they both take the exact same shape, except that they kind of shifted along the x-axis. Notice for these graphs that we're changing both sine and cos. The x values just by one each time the angle changes. And we're using the sine and cos values to change both the y values on each sprite. But recall earlier when we said that cos is referring to the x and sine is referring to the y, well we can create a circle when we use these two values in tandem. To do that, I'm just gonna duplicate the cos sprite I'm going to rename it to circle. I'm just gonna use a pencil emoji here. And what I'm gonna do with this one is put the tip of the pencil to the center point of the sprite. Then back in the code, we're going to be setting the X value now instead of changing the X value. And what we're gonna be setting it to is pretty much the exact same thing here. 
Well, it is. It's the exact same thing. The thing we do need to change is the y value, because remember, sine is y. x is cos, because cos is crossing. I'm actually going to change the color of this sprite, probably to a green color. The last thing we want to do is change the starting point of the sprite. Recall that the starting y value is going to be 0. So we may as well enter in 0 on the y axis. And the starting x value is going to be the cos value here, so pretty much 1, 1 times 100. So we may as well make the starting value 100. Let's go ahead and click the green flag and watch our circle draw. There we go. There you have it. There's our circle of sine and cos, mapped to x and y. But what about tan, I hear you say? All right, all right, let's go ahead and do tan. Go ahead and duplicate the circle sprite. Let's go tan. Whenever it's summertime and I am tanning, I'm usually getting tanned by the sun. So we're going to use a sun emoji here, and I'm going to pop it back in the center. Jump back over to the code tab because the sun's a yellowy color. That's the color I'm gonna go for. Cool, yellow sun. Now back down here in the render, I'm actually gonna change the x value again. I'm gonna change the x value by one. And the list we're gonna change is tan values. The last thing we wanna do is change where tan starts. So you see here, tan's got a value of around about zero. So we're gonna have y zero and the x value at negative 180. The same spot where our sine surface started. So negative 180. Then turn off that list. And the last thing I'm going to do here is just change that constant value back to around 10, but you don't actually even need it. But I'm going to have it there just so you can see what's going on. Clicking the green flag, see what happens with our tan values. I'm just going to get our tan values back up on the screen. So starting really small, and then it does this really funky action. So what's happening here is this is the point where tan is actually approaching infinity. And it gets to infinity all the way somewhere up here, and then it flips down to negative infinity, and it starts counting up from here all the way back up to infinity again, and back down to negative infinity. And this is how it repeats itself. And there you are. That's how you graph the sine, cos, and tan functions in Scratch. And you can also make some circles. I strongly encourage you to play around with these functions. For instance, set x to this value as well, instead of changing it to one. Head over to the sine and cos sprites and mix up these constant values. If you change one of these constants here, see what the result is. I strongly emphasize that you play around with this. The more you play around with it, the more that you pin them to the values in the list, the stronger your understanding is gonna get. Maybe I should have put this right at the beginning of this tutorial, but why learn trigonometry in the first place? Well, trigonometry is huge in game design. And if you're using Scratch, I'm suspecting you like making games, so learning trig is probably in your best interests. How's it used? Well, you use trig to rotate a spaceship, handling the trajectory of projectiles, like missiles or something like that, calculating and determining collisions between two objects. You can also set the rotation of certain sprites. Now Scratch does all this for you anyway, but it's really good to learn how to do this under the hood. If you persist with this trigonometry series, we're going to be making a game similar to the one that you're seeing on the screen right now. Here we've got a spaceship and we're rotating its direction while it's moving around. We've also got a turret in the center. When we crash into the turret, we are going to lose a life. So all the movement that you're seeing in this game is going to be done by using trigonometry. There's a car coming your way in the top right hand corner to go check that out now. Hey, just before you go, if you're an educator in the house, then I've got a free resource that accompanies this video that you can use with your group of learners in your learning context. Go check out the description for more information. I hope you found this tutorial useful that graphs sine, cos, and tan. Until next time, I'm off to go find a wave. I'll catch you in the next one.